right so with that brief motivation let us directly jump into the concept of laplace transform okay so first we will write down the definition for a continuous time signal x of t okay for a continuous time signal x of t laplace transform is defined as okay so laplace transform is defined as okay x of s is equal to we put a triangle we don't use this notation every time this equality with triangle means what it is the definition so x of s equal to integral minus infinity to infinity x of t multiplied with e power minus st dt so let us call this equation one so previously i called one let us discard that so from now onwards we will give equation number so x of s equal to how much integral minus infinity to infinity x of t multiplied with e power minus st dt okay where where s yes, equal to sigma plus j omega is complex variable okay is complex variable okay is a complex variable so definitely what is sigma here so sigma is nothing but real part of s yes. okay and we say that omega equal to imaginary part of s yes. okay so this is the way how we define the laplace transform so let us substitute the s whatever we have uh, defined in this equation so from now onwards i don't use this triangle so this implies what will happen to x of s i'll substitute s only in the right hand side that should be integral minus infinity to infinity x of t ah if you replace s with j omega you will uh, s with sigma plus j omega you get e power minus sigma t e power minus j omega t dt okay right so that would be the uh, expansion of laplace transform but if you pay little bit attention you can see that i am just putting a square bracket here so if you look at this equation how is this looking at so this is looking like fourier transform of which signal x of t multiplied with e power minus sigma t so this implies what is x of s left hand side is as usual x of s but right hand side we can see it as ctft of which signal not x of t but ctft of e power minus sigma t so when will this exist here in the sense when will fourier transform of x of t e power minus sigma t exist okay when x of t e power minus sigma t is absolutely integrable okay so this exists okay so this exists only if only if x of t e power minus sigma t is absolutely integrable okay is absolutely integrable okay what does that mean that implies integral minus infinity to infinity modulus of x of t e power minus sigma t dt should be less than infinite okay so here you have minus okay yes so the fourier transform of x of t e power minus sigma t exists only if x of t e power minus sigma t is absolutely integrable so if then what happens fourier transform of x of t e power minus sigma t exists that indirectly means who will exist who will exist here x of s exists so when will x of s exist x of s exists only if x of t e power minus sigma t is absolutely integrable okay so exists or mathematically we can say that it will converge to okay it will converge us okay x of okay we'll write down that okay so uh, this exists i said which one this in the sense ctft in the sense x of s okay uh, x of s exists only if x of t over minus sigma t is absolutely integrable okay so in other words okay we we'll write down that another way of telling this okay in other words x of s 
converges okay so x of s converges okay instead of telling that x of s exists we can say that x of s converges in other words again what does it mean takes finite values okay so takes finite values okay if it takes infinite values it has no meaning right yes so x of s exists in other words x of s converges only if who is absolutely integrable x of t power minus sigma t is absolutely integrable so definitely existence of laplace transform depends on whom the sigma which is real part of x of s okay existence of x of s depends on whom sigma which is nothing but real part of s so that is sigma which is equal to real part of s plays a very important role okay right so with that let us directly jump into examples okay first one let us take x of t to be delta of t okay so which is very simple example we know how the plot of this fellow looks so this is our Dirac delta function which looks like this so what let we will try to find the Laplace transform of this signal so x of s would be equal to how much at integral minus infinity to infinity according to the definition it should be x of t e power minus st dt so this simplifies to how much according to the definition of Dirac delta this should be equal to 1. Why Dirac delta exists only at t equal to 0? If you substitute t with 0, you will get e power 0 which is 1 and hence it is overall integral would be equal to 1. So indirectly what do we say? So delta of t will have x of s. Yes, okay x of t equal to delta of t will have x of s which is equal to 1 as the Laplace transform. Now let us discuss about convergence of x of s. Means what? For what values of s this fellow is finite. Okay. So definitely whatever may be the values of s. Huh, whatever may be the values of s. x of s is always 1. So means what? For all values of s our x of s converges okay so we write that x of s yes, converges for all values of s okay so what does that mean so if you look at if you study if you have studied little bit about the s domain so in that s domain the plot uh, uh, will look like this right so sigma and j omega so this we call it as what s plane okay so in this plane where will our x of s uh, converge okay for all values of s that fellow is how much at that fellow is one whatever may be the value of s let's say s equal to let's i took s equal to let's say minus 2 plus 3 j what will be x of s x of s equal to 1 correct so if, where is that point so at minus 2 and plus 3 means minus 2 and plus 3 j it will be somewhere here so at that point what is x of s x of s is 1 means what for all whatever may be value of s our laplace transform converges to 1 so in indirectly it means what this implies uh, Okay, so before we go into that, okay, the, uh, now let us define one thing, which is the values of or the range of values of, okay, the range of values of S, yes. okay, so range of values of H for which X of S converges, for which X of S converges, okay, is called Okay, we have to bring this concept in an example because we have to uh, understand what is this with an example. Okay, the range of values of S for which X of S converges is called what? Region of convergence. Okay, so we call it as what? Region of convergence. Okay, and uh, acronym for that is ROC. From now onwards, we will use ROC for 
region of convergence okay now let us come back to the example what is it we have got we got x of s to be equal to how much one implies what our laplace transform of delta of t which is equal to one converges for all values of s means where is the region of convergence region of convergence is entire s plane okay for the given example okay for given example x of s is equal to how much for a given example x of s equal to 1 okay so this implies roc would be is roc is what entire s plane okay entire s plane 